and not overthinking things and experimenting and being daring. So um, that's very exciting. And um, I'm uh, next going to um, invite on uh, James Gill. Um, and so by the way, you can use the applause function uh, to, uh, to thank Martin. Um, and it's a huge pleasure to see you, James. Um, and um, James is the CEO of GoSquared. Um, and so GoSquared is an amazing company designing software that just works, um, helping people get SaaS businesses up and going online. And uh, there you are, James, on screen. Um, oh, hello. Uh, I'll, I'll join you for just a second here, yeah. Um, interesting fact about James is he's uh, dangerously obsessed with Apple products. And a quick question, James, have you got your iPhone 12 yet or are you... Uh, I, I didn't get priority in the queue, I'm afraid, Ed. Sorry, no. <laughs> That's a shame. And so James is going to be talking about how he's using Notion to work together remotely. Um, and I'm very personally excited by this one because this must be a, a challenge all of us are, are facing effective remote working. So James Gill, a pleasure having you here, CEO of GoSquared. Um, and I will let, let you take it away. Thanks so much, Ed. Hi, everybody. This is my first virtual virtual conference, so I'm going to try my best. I know we've only got 15 minutes, and uh, I, I'm just looking at my my lounge wall. So I, I assume there's a, at least one or two people out there in the audience. And uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, thanks so much. And uh, also, great talk, Martin. Uh, big fans of Product Board. Uh, I will just, uh, I'm going to share my screen which uh, feels somewhat dangerous uh, in front of what I assume is um, many, many people, but uh, hopefully everyone can see that okay. Uh, I, I'm gonna go on the assumption that they can. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, my whole talk is all about uh, how we're, we're using Notion to work together at, at GoSquared. Um, I think, uh, yeah, Notion's, uh, oh, just, just quickly, yep, yeah, uh, Ed, you did the explainer better than I could. So that, that's me, and that's a picture of me, uh, and here's me also talking. Um, but uh, I guess, yeah, the whole talk is uh, in a very condensed 15, 14, maybe even 13 minutes now. Uh, what are we, what is Notion? I know um, there's a huge array of people at Jam from having the luxury of being with you all uh, or with some of you in real jams in the past. Uh, there's people that work at just starting a company and people that are working in 50 person companies, people working in 500,000 person companies like Tesco uh, out there. So I um, want to make sure we're all on the same page about what Notion is um, and then just talk about our own route at, uh, at uh, Go Squared and how we adopted Notion. Um, uh, and then got a couple of top tips, uh, which uh, hopefully will help you in your journey to using a tool like Notion. And then fourth and finally, secret, top secret bonus thing that might be helpful. Um, so let's, let's jump in. First of all, what, uh, what the hell is Notion um, and why does it matter? Uh, Notion themselves pitch uh, their tool as like an all-in-one workspace, which... Uh, could mean about a million things to a million different people. Uh, but they, on their site, make it very helpful. They, they say it's like a team wiki, but it's also projects and tasks. And it's also notes and docs. And so it can sometimes be quite hard to understand uh, what, this, what this thing is. Um, in, in my perspective, uh, Notion uh, really is a combination of a few tools that a lot of you will probably be familiar with. Um, in, on some level, it's uh, a bit like uh, Confluence uh, or Google Docs or Dropbox Paper, maybe you've come across Confluence is sort of the old school like wiki team collaboration kind of thing. Um, but then there's tools like Google Docs, which are obviously very flexible for writing documents. Uh, and then there's Dropbox Paper, which is a slightly more new and trendy um, kind of thing for writing collaborative documents. You've then also got tools like Trello and maybe Jira you might use for managing your engineering sprints. Um, uh, for managing tasks and uh, uh, helping collaborate on tasks as a team. You've also got things like Evernote, which are kind of like personal things for collecting bookmarks and notes around the web. And Notion also proclaims to be that. And then there's also tools like Google Sheets and Airtable, which are more for like tabular data and, uh, and, and keeping track of things in tables and more structured data. And so Notion is I would say just a, like um, an amalgamation of all those things in one, which may sound like crazy or may sound really, really complicated, but somehow it actually manages to do a lot of that and do it really well. Um, 
for, for us at Go Squared, we actually started using Notion um, back in June last year, um, uh, back in that wonderful year, bef which was normality that we all vaguely remember. And, uh, and, and we started using it uh, before we were all going remote. We were all actually still in the same office, apart from one or two people on the team. And uh, as the team was growing from 10 through, you know, size of, we're not the, the, we're not the Tesco's of the world as a team, by the way, but we're also not like just uh, one or two people in their bedroom. Well, we're, we're now 10 or 20 people in their bedroom, but we're, we're a more proper business than, uh, than just using it for personal use. Um, and, and in terms of our, our value from using Notion, like um, since June 2019, we've had not a single meeting that has gone awry and not a single meeting that has been messy, not a single meeting that has been confusing. Every single meeting we've had has been perfect. Um, no, I lie, I lie, but uh, it has certainly helped along the way and certainly helped with us working remotely. And I want to talk a bit more about how it's helped. So our route to Notion, just to clarify, I think it helps give a bit of background on why a tool like Notion has, has been valuable for us and hopefully it'll maybe relate to, to how you guys and everyone have uh, been, been using um, have been thinking about a tool like this. Um, so just very quick timeline, like we've been around quite a while as a company. And in the early days, in the old days, we used to use a team chat tool called Campfire, which was very, very, very basic and uh, very simple and was allowing us to team chat. Then Slack came along, we're all familiar with Slack. And if we don't use Slack, we probably use something like Microsoft Teams these days. And one of the things we kept finding with, uh, with Slack and with team chat was that, um, Essentially, uh, you end up talking to each other loads, even if you're in the same room. We found this when we we're you know, in the office, but now everyone's chatting away, chatting away. But um, as the team's grown, more and more questions come up all over and over and over. And it's really a bad use of everyone's time to keep like pinging each other questions all the time. So we gradually wanted to find a way that we can maybe avoid spending so much time just answering questions ad hoc and get out of Slack a bit and perhaps put some process in place, structure in place. So we looked at, um, we started using a tool called Dropbox Paper, which was great for helping us write documentation. Uh, but it had a bunch of problems and a bunch of challenges uh, that we eventually meant we went looking at Notion. And our journey from Dropbox Paper to Notion uh, was a long and winding road. Um, one of the things was, we love Dropbox Paper. It was a great typewriter um, in comparison to some other tools. Uh, it made it really nice to write documentation, but uh, it was pretty rubbish for actually doing that core task of, uh, you know, that um, Martin was talking briefly about jobs to be done earlier. We have that job to be done of like documents that we, we needed the team to read, like things like, um, you know, oh, I would get pinged on Slack, at, you know, how do I do an expense claim or um, what's our, uh, what time, uh, I don't know, uh, what's our holiday policy, things like that, um, but all sorts of other stuff too. And uh, a lot of this stuff was actually written in Dropbox paper, but the team couldn't find it. And it was really hard to search for things. It was really hard to find things. And we also, even though we started using Dropbox paper, we still had a load of other tools around. So we had Dropbox itself, which kind of, I don't know if they've fixed this, uh, maybe they have, but Dropbox and Dropbox paper didn't really talk to each other a lot. So we saw loads of files in Dropbox and um, we had like Apple Pages documents and we still had like Google Sheets and we had Apple Numbers and Microsoft Excel things. And we had PowerPoint presentations and keynote presentations. And uh, we had sort of, I don't know, people would keep track of meeting notes in like Apple Notes, Basically, it was, a, it was chaotic, it was a mess. And, uh, and we, we gradually, oh, uh, we gradually started uh, looking elsewhere. Um, one of the things we really liked about Dropbox Paper though, that meant we didn't switch to something like Google Docs was this, this quote, which I, I, I think I might have this on my, my gravestone or something, but I just think when writing documents, internal documents, whether it's blog posts, the more people can mess around with the design and the layout, uh, often the more times people spend on that rather than the actual content. And so we loved that about Dropbox Paper and wanted that. That was a big reason why we didn't go to tools like um, Google Docs. Um, and so we came across this tool that people were talking about loads called 
Notion and it looked very cool. And so we tr started checking it out and it was very, very tempting. And uh, we gradually started messing about. You can sign up for free and we moved uh, our key playbooks over and said, like, oh, this is great, this is nice. Um, what we found though was we got more and more tempted by all the possibilities that Notion provided. So um, we moved these playbooks over and it was a really nice friendly way to do it. But we started realizing, oh my goodness, this does do more. This does things like tables and tabular data and you can link things and it has these things called databases. And so we started going a bit crazy. And before we knew it, like almost everything in the company now runs through Notion. So we've got our playbooks, we've got our um, most of our documentation, we've got each team using it for their own uh, way they work. We've got our content calendar. So we manage all of our blog content through that um, and all of our blog posts which we collaborate on with writers around the world um, we have in there we have our product spec templates so every feature every product change we're working on we have a written document there that we collaborate on we even have had our product roadmap in there too um, so there's like tons and tons and tons our okrs as well um, all of this stuff now exists in notion and it's become this real like brain of the business um, and uh, I guess I just wanted to talk through a few top tips that we've found uh, from doing that whole migration. Um, I know we're in the last like third of the talk, so I'll try and whiz through these, but I really want to make sure we, you have some key takeaways. One of the first things was that if you're just using Notion with the documents, you're kind of just using a wiki. The opportunity with Notion is if you use databases, they can be incredibly valuable to you and your team and, and how you grow and use Notion over time. It's great to just start with a few documents, but we found it's really, really valuable to have uh, use databases because then you can tag things, you can annotate, you can uh, have more attributes and, and data that can help you find things and search for things, filter for things in the future. Um, to the point where like we do our OKRs, our objectives and key results as a company with uh, table, with linked databases and databases. So we have our objectives and they have their own set of, um, uh, this is not a real objective, by the way, we are not actually gonna fire any lasers, uh, but uh, you can use that and then within your table you can have tables within tables and you can use databases to really go um, crazy and have a lot of interlinking and relational stuff that can really help you structure data which otherwise would kind of exist as static documents and may go stale very easily databases that help you avoid things going too stale um, kind of following on from that it's really great to organize things by department um, so I would definitely recommend as with any tool like trying to make sure within your team or within your company there's like one person that's kind of the owner of Notion um, otherwise things can get really messy and you can do as we talked about earlier you can do so much with Notion I recommend like having things if you can organized by department this is the sidebar of Notion by the way that we have and having kind of a few concepts that might be shared across the company, things like meetings, uh, things like documents, things like your objectives. But then you can, if you have them set up as databases, you can then feed them into each department. And so each department can have its own sort of homepage um, linking to those other concepts. Uh, so this is an example of our customer success homepage. It's got the documents table database, but linked to and filtering just for uh, documents that relate to customer success. Um, three or five yeah kind of just touched on that but having that centralized documents database is really helpful because suddenly you don't just have like a bunch of word documents sitting around in um dropbox or a bunch of google docs that are just impossible i've never been able to use google docs by the way and find stuff you, like google's great at search but they're not very good at just laying stuff out letting you find stuff and that's why notion is great with the docs database you can kind of filter and segment uh, for instance, this very relevant Hello Jam document, uh, you can set the department, the type of document it is, the status of it, you can tag other stakeholders, and you can add all those kinds of properties which can really help you find it later. Um, this one's really cool, four out of five, um, we're nearly there. <laughs> um, having a personal home screen is a huge like giant leap in your in how you can use notion normally like people think of a wiki as like there's a big home page like the home page of wikipedia i don't know when i last went to that but the opportunity if, if you use databases a lot is you can then filter those databases into a personal home screen for yourself just on documents and objectives and meetings that are relevant to you so this is my personal home screen and it's in the company uh, notion but everything's filtered to me so when I wake up every morning um, I uh, 
after screaming into a pillow because everyone's in a global pandemic, I then check my global, um, my, my home screen in Notion and can see exactly what I'm uh, focusing on for the day, all relevant to me. Uh, and then five out of five, finally, just don't feel the pressure to replace everything with Notion. Um, Notion is a great versatile tool, but things like, for instance, our product roadmap, we initially brought that all over. And now, um, and I wasn't even told to say this, but we now use product board, uh, which thank you again, Martin, um, is a far superior tool, I think, for some of the specific needs we had there. But just don't feel like you're pressured to do everything in Notion. You don't have to. Um, and, and just try and see and start small and work from there. Uh, last sort of 30 seconds, I was just going to say, uh, we, I actually, yeah, there's a big blog post written about this uh, with a lot more info, but also basically all of the things I showed you there, we've got as like free templates that you can just download and use yourself. And that's a hugely valuable part of Notion and the whole Notion um, experience. Um, and you can just download and use them. And uh, yeah, uh, that's kind of the talk. I uh, hope it's been of some value and I hope some people have watched it. Um, hope it was okay. And uh, I guess back to, uh, to you, Ed, in the, in the studio. Uh, thank you very much indeed, James. Um, very, uh, very inspirational and good, um, good to hear that um, you are, um, you are, uh, yeah, using, using product board as well. So that's fantastic. Um, so that's James, uh, that's James Gill. Everyone give him a big round of applause. Um, there we are, that's the applause coming through. Um, and uh, a lot of love from the audience today. Um, and so, um, so thank you very much, everybody. And um, yeah, so next up, um, we have uh, the honor of um, having uh, Alex Watson, uh, 